at 10 continues. Big Brother is watching. There's a nationwide push to start tracking where children are during school hours. They would basically be microchipped, kind of like a pet. ABC4 News wanted to know what parents in Utah think about the possible tracking system. The 19's Kimberly Nelson joins us now live in Salt Lake City. Kimberly, what are they saying? Well, they're not excited about it, and here's the deal. Uh, students who play hooky cost school districts money, so to coop some of that money, they're taking those drastic steps, as you just mentioned. But parents we spoke with are outraged about what this could mean for our future. You may use it to get into secure buildings. And it's already embedded into most of your credit cards being scanned every time you swipe. The technology is known as Radio Frequency Identification System, and it's soon going to be used at some schools across the country to track students' whereabouts. Excuse me? They want to microchip my children? Like, like I do with my dog and my cat? That's right. Students will be microchipped. At least their identification cards will, allowing administrators to track where the students are at all times. Very stupid. Because you're, you know, they're going to get away with it somehow. The move is designed to increase revenue. The more students schools can prove are in class, the more money they get from the federal government. A 1% increase in enrollment can mean more than a million dollars for the district. But many we spoke with in Salt Lake City say the technology comes with another price. Once we do one step, it's going to happen to, well, let's, let's do the, you know, let's plant them inside of this person and stuff like everybody, that. Yeah. And every, you know, and everybody. It's going too far. It's unconstitutional. Sandra Bullock had that movie, The Net. It's still really far-fetched. Not that far-fetched. Actually, in 2004, the FDA actually approved microchips that could be implanted into the human body for medical purposes, basically telling someone who they are, what kind of blood type they have, and any medical conditions. Also, in Mexico, kids are already being microchipped as a form of anti-kidnapping prevention. We're now reporting live in Salt Lake City, Kimberly Nelson, ABC4 News 19. Dan Shea is building a human lung. It may not look like a lung, but it contains the organ cells and functionality, positioned tightly together to fit on a single microchip. Shea and his colleagues at Harvard's Wies Institute are breaking new ground in biomedical engineering, according to their director, Don Ingber. He says that after years of research, the scientists are now able to replicate all types of human body parts. Uh, rather than building a whole organ, could we build sort of the minimal functional unit, a 3D cross-section of, of your lung or your gut or your liver that would have human cells and that would re reconstitute or mimic the way a whole organ works? And then eventually, could you link many of these together and have sort of a human body? Ingber says the technology has the potential to revolutionize the way pharmaceutical companies test new drugs. The idea here is that the pharmaceutical industry has been limited by the fact that animal studies just don't work. Uh, we lose innumerable animal lives at a huge cost. It takes an incredible amount of time, and then more often than not, they don't predict what happens in human clinical trials. So it's back to ground zero. Where animal trials fail, Ingber says organs on chips will succeed because they're made up of human cells and tissue. The lung on a chip is made up of human lung and capillary cells, which are divided by a porous membrane. These cells are sandwiched between a pair of vacuum channels, which mimic how lungs flex when breathing. This is real-time imagery of white blood cells attacking bacteria the researchers introduced into the chip. Because it's crystal clear, we can look at a microscope and, and we can watch what's going on in this human cells and tissues and organ-like structures in real time so we get insight into the mechanism. How does a drug work? How does a toxicity happen? And that's a huge value to pharmaceutical companies. Ingber says his teams are now working on linking different organ microchips together with the hopes of simulating the complex structure of the human body. He says there's still a long way to go, but he hopes one day his organ microchips will replace animal studies altogether, while at the same time providing a new and more effective way to test new drugs. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, June 15th, 2012, and I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. And on YouTube, I have a couple of channels, DDarko2012 and DDarko 2013. Thank you for joining me today. I have lots of good news to get to. Some's kind of crazy off the wall. Um, 
but I have a poll up here how long until a drone kills the first American on American soil. So the first option is within the next year, within the next two years, it will eventually happen or it will never happen. So uh, we know that we've had the first American killed overseas um, in Yemen and that, and actually two Americans, and then also we've had the first American arrested by a drone, I believe it was in one of the Dakotas. So go in there and check that out. Uh, you can donate if you'd like to to GGN. There's a little PayPal button there and all sorts of little features. So, okay, so I'm ready to get going here. You saw those videos on the RFID chips and that, and I'll just roll into Big Brother. It says here, new energy source for future medical implants are sugar. Implantable fuel cell built at MIT could power neutral, or sorry, neural prosthetics that help patients regain control of limbs. So, it says here, MIT engineers have developed a fuel cell that runs on the same sugar that powers human cells, which we know is glucose. It says here that this fuel cell could be used to drive highly efficient brain implants, highly efficient brain implants of the future, which uh, they say could help paralyze patients. So it's all in the name of caring about the victims of eugenics, right? So the eugenicists who want to kill a lot of people want to call the population. They'd like to see two-thirds of the population gone, or if not, totally zombified, hooked up to the matrix. Uh, but at the same time, they have a heart. They have ethics, and they care about paralyzed patients. Um, could be due to what? Uh, maybe a, just a slew of 30 vaccines the minute they're born into this hellhole, right? Uh, could be anything. So, who knows? But uh, we're going to keep moving on here. We can see where this is going, though, right? So, it says here, remote control chip implant delivers medications. Remember this article? Uh, what was this from? February? February 16th of this year, remote control chip implant delivers meds. So, new study is believed to be the first attempt at using a wirelessly controlled drug chip to dispense medicine in people. We also know that robots are now dispensing uh, medication, too. So, they have robots for that to uh, basically replace nurses. But let's say you're, uh, it's mandatory, you know, because you're, um, you, you know, you think too much, you're a dissident in this brave new world, maybe in the future, and uh, you're supposed to be medicated wireless, wirelessly. And uh, you have, you know, possibly too much Thorazine uh, pumped in, into you or the nurse, you know, who's not there now, it's the robot, uh, pumping you full of all of these drugs to make you feel happy, right? Because it's all about being, that's another thing, the elites, they like you to be happy while you're uh, being screwed. And they give you a little too much of uh, whatever drug they're giving you, and hey, it's not the nurse's fault because it's a robot. He didn't know. So you're not going to put the robot in jail. Say, oops. So it says here, U.S. cities embrace software to automatically detect suspicious behavior. This is from June 11th. San Francisco is set to become the latest U.S. city to invest in software. Remember, they just were in the news about what? The first city to go completely 100%, um, what was it, recycling or something like that? No, that was that's what it was. No rubbish, no garbage. Created by Texas-based uh, labs monitors and memorizes movements as they are captured on security cameras. The uh, says here the software footage in real time is like a human uh, would learn to understand, detect, and report suspicious and abnormal behavior. So we already have robots um, at airports doing this. They're actually humans, but the robotic humans, the TSA and that uh, agents, and they're actually looking for suspicious and ab abnormal behavior. But you also have. Um, the zombies out in the population amongst you hiding, lurking, and they're also, um, if they see something saying something, as the um, Napolitano, basically the Homeland Securities are, is uh, telling them to do. So the good slaves listen, right? It says here, U.S. Secret Service buys 26 devices to identify and collect wireless communication data. So a company out of New York has been awarded $35,000 to uh, buy the Secret Service of the United States to provide 26 shield test enclosures known as RF radio frequency isolation test products in order to help the Secret Service identify and collect data from wireless communication devices. So we've heard about uh, digital DNA and digital footprints, um, kind of like your carbon footprint. You have what? Forensic investigation of cell phones, smartphones, PDA, and other handheld devices. Uh, they'll be able to use the software to basically uh, get in there. And just briefly, there's more articles on this. Connect to watch your emotions and serve up advertising. So I remember I mentioned this before about how 
uh, privacy, um, not so much privacy, but surveillance and uh, just basically data mining is usually done uh, through the guise of advertising. So it says here in a recently revealed patent application, the company suggests that using its Connect sensor to analyze your face and body language for emotions could help companies better target their ads. Emotional uh, analysis of emails, search terms, and even your online gaming performance could also influence the ads you see. So this is the you know the typical overdone example of what Minority Report with the uh, advertisements that are targeted and stuff like that based on retinal scans. Well, they're now they're doing emotions uh, with video games to see how you're feeling during it. So what Facebook knows, the company's social scientists are hunting for insights about human behavior. So what they could find or what they do find, Facebook uh, could use to cash in on our personal information, our data. And it says here, and remake our view of society, which is a slave society. So if Facebook were a country, a conceit that uh, Zuckerberg has entertained in the public, its 900 million members would make it the third largest in the world. It says here it has private conversations, family photos, records of road trips, births, marriages, and deaths all stream into the company's servers and lodged there. So it says here the company's uh, collected the most extensive data set ever assembled on human social behavior. And it goes down there and it says that um, that they're using this platform to tweak users' behavior. And it says, unlike the academic social scientists, like the ones using the mice and um, complain that they have to use mice for that RFID chip, whatever, uh, it says what? It says Facebook can basically uh, carry out an experiment on hundreds of millions of people. So, And they do it voluntarily because they're zombies. So next up, we have 1.1 million plus Gates grants. It says here, galvanic bracelets that measure students' engagement. So. It goes in there in the uh, you can't make this stuff up category. It says here the Gates Foundation spending a million dollars to develop a way to psychologically or sorry physiologically measure how engaged students are by their teachers' lessons. In other words, how are they receiving the imprinting um, of false ideas that not even theirs? Basically, brainwashing. How are they accepting the programming, the brainwashing? This involves a skin response bracelets that kids could wear so that their engagement levels could be measured. So it's kind of like the chip that wants to, uh, to basically gauge how much the eugenics patient is receiving their eugenics. Casual workers forced to wear barcodes, so it says here in a warehouse in Australia, they're being required to wear and pay for armbands, identify them as non-permanent staff. So it says here that the scan must be done before starting work and carry the armbands at all times. You've probably already seen this, just throw it in there, coalition battle in the UK, brewing is email monitoring powers should be unveiled this week. Now, we already know this is already happening, but this is what they tell the zombies powers to allow the police and security service to monitor every email phone call and website visited will be unveiled this week and intensifying so they're letting you know that they're already doing it without telling you that they're already doing it Theresa may set sets out plans to monitor internet use in the uk so it says here they'll uh, allow the uk to have stored all the information for a year to allow police and intelligence services to access if they deem you're a threat to the state so flame steals data even when computers are not connected to the internet. So, so malware experts from Bitdefender have un uncovered a special capability in the code that allows a virus to steal data from computers that are not connected to the internet or network machines. So yeah, you might want to pay attention to this because I think I got infected recently from this, just basically having a USB memory stick or external hard drive plugged in and once you're back on the net, it goes in there and it just unleashes. So websites to be forced to identify trolls under new measures, to be forced to identify people who have posted defamatory messages online, they'll probably target good people, not the real trolls because they work for the government. Same people that would be doing this, monitoring. So it says here, in Japan, national ID proposal spurs privacy concerns, so they have concerns about uh, national ID, so what? USDA wants RFID tracking technology to be mandatory in all US food stamp program. But there's also programs to actually put RFID chips on the homeless as well. Apple's Siri, which is about basically voice activated stuff, commands and that, is to ride shotgun in cars from nine major auto manufacturers. So it's called the Eyes Free System, and it'll f so it's called an infotainment system, which will actually create new distractions. The, remember this: the NSA is building the biggest spy center in the world, Facebook data center to Sweden for Arctic chill of their servers. Google uses gray water for U.S. data center cooling. Then we have. 64 drone bases on American soil as the Air Force drones are allowed to record U.S. citizens in the United States and hold their information for up to 90 days. So the Pentagon's complaining about not having enough people to fly its drones. But what happens when robots take their job of manning these drones? And the RAND Corporation is advising the Air Force to hire reality TV producers to uh, basically 
take control of this massive inflow of information. Thank you.